PyQt Basics Using Widgets. Hello everybody, Ben Finkel here and in this nugget we're going to cover how to use the basic user interface element inside of PyQt. They're called widgets. Widgets cover everything from the containing window of your user interface right down to every little checkbox, text box, and every other user interface element that you can imagine might be inside of your application. In the world of Qt, widgets are how they would collectively refer to all the different user interface elements that a user works with inside of a GUI application. These are the individual components that make up a whole GUI interface, and you're used to working with these user interface elements even if you don't realize it. The user interface elements, the widgets, are the individual components on some kind of form or user interface that you type into that you click on. So take this example here. Right at the top, this is actually an individual widget called a Q label. A label is just a piece of text that's not interactive that gets printed out on your window. Or down here, this is called a Q push button. And a push button, like you would imagine, is just a button that the user can click and it can have an event associated with it so that when the user clicks it, something happens on your program, something happens in your application. So each of these elements, each of these items is a widget in the parlance of Qt. And all of these widgets have to belong to some parent. They have to belong to another widget. They can't just float out there on their own. So in this case, they all belong to this window here, which is just the basic Q widget element. So a Q widget is just a window. It can be resized, open, closed, minimized, etc. And each of these individual elements, in this case, belong to that parent Q widget element so that they have a place to be drawn. You can't just create a button and throw it up on the screen it belongs inside of a window. And that helps us with not only moving things around together, right, as I move my window around, all of these different user interface elements move with it, but also resizing. I can keep things uh, pushed to the right or the left or the top or the bottom of my window. And destruction, when I close my window, each of these individual elements is closed or destroyed as well. All right, so take a look at my very first little user interface element program that I've got going on here. The first thing you'll notice is that I create a new class and I inherit from the QtGUI.Q widget class. So I'm creating a new class version of the Q widget, which is just a window. And the reason for that will become apparent in a minute. Down here inside of my constructor function is where I actually create my user interface elements inside of my window. And the first one I want to create is the one that we just saw in that example, the QtGUI.Q label element. All this element is, is a simple text-based label that's going to print out inside of my window. And the reason that it knows to print inside of my window is because of the second parameter here where I pass in self. So I'm passing in this Q widget object myself so that it knows to create the label inside of itself. This creates a nice little modular class that I can just create down here in my main application. Main window equals my form. I create a new instance of my form and boom, I've got a new window. Let's see it in action real quick, and we'll talk about what's going on here. Come over here, and I'll say Python pi qt one dot pi. Okay, so there's my form, my window, my Q widget with my first UI element, my label going on. So take a look here, and let's talk about what happened. I created a new instance of Q label, and I passed in two parameters to it. The first was the text that I actually wanted the label to be, my first UI element. You can see that printed out right there. And then the second was a reference to myself, or the window that I wanted this label added to. Then you'll notice that I set the geometry and the window title for my window itself before telling it to show. So I moved it down to 300, 300, and I made it sized 250, or rather 250 by 150. So I set my parameters for where I wanted that window to be on my screen, set the title, and then I called a show on it and I see my window with the Q label element right on it. How did I know what two parameters to pass into the Q label constructor, the text and then self? Well, hi-ho documentation. Qt has great online documentation. Once again, I'm going to recommend that you go ahead and bookmark these pages for the Qt project. This widgets and layouts document talks about a number of different things, but in particular, it has a list of the basic widgets that are available to you that you can use. And there's a whole bunch of them, way more than we're going to cover in any of these nuggets. But if we look at QLabel here, we can just select it, and that'll bring us right to the QLabel documentation. And when we scroll down to the public functions, what we can see here is a listing of the constructors that are available for QLabel. 
And here's the first one where we can just pass in the parent. But here's the second one where we can pass in both the text and the parent, as well as any flags that we need to pass in along with it. So that's how we know that, hey, we can pass in a text to the constructor of the queue label object. And if we wanted to look back at, let's say, oh, I don't know, Q line edit. And I'll bring that one up. When I scroll down here to its public functions, you'll see that I can pass in contents, another string, which is probably going to pre-populate the line edit with some text. Let's take a look at that in action now. All right, so I've added in a second line here to create a QT GUI .Q line edit widget. And I'm passing in two parameters. I'm using the second definition from the documentation, some text that I want to pre-populate inside of that line edit, as well as, again, a reference to the Q widget parent so I have some window that this text edit belongs to. Go ahead and run this, and let's see what it looks like. And the first thing you'll notice is that it worked. I've got some text inside of this line edit box here, and I can click in it and move my cursor around in it. Uh, yeah, I can. And I can delete it and type in my own text, whatever I want. It works just like a text box. But what happened to my label? Well, my label's behind it. They drew on top of one another. And this is the first big challenge, the first big hurdle that you're going to run into when working with user interface libraries, and that is getting your components, your elements, your widgets in this case, laid out appropriately on your form so that they're not blocking one another. Let's do some basic movement right now with our widget. So the simplest way to position user interface elements inside of their container, in this case the window, is to use something called absolute positioning. It's the simplest, but it's also the most manual, the most hands-on intensive form, but we'll show it off here. And what we mean by absolute positioning is every element is going to have its position defined in absolute terms based on a 0, 0 origin in the upper left corner of the container. Take a look at this in action. I'll call lbl.move, let's say 15, 20. So what I'm saying here is that I want the label to be moved 15 pixels from the left edge of the container and 20 pixels from the top edge of the container. And no matter where my container moves, however it resizes, the label is always going to be absolutely positioned 15 pixels from the left, 20 pixels from the top. I'll do something similar with my line edit. I'll say line edit.move. Um, let's keep it also 15, and we'll put it 50 pixels from the top. So I'll go ahead and save this and give it a run, and we can see how it works in action. So what's happened here is now both elements are visible, of course, because I've positioned them so that they're not drawing on top of one another. And specifically, they are 15 pixels from the left, the label is 20 pixels from the top, and the text edit, or the line edit, is 50 pixels from the top. And no matter what I do with this window, as I move it around, they maintain that position, that absolute reference to the origin point. And in computer graphics, typically the origin point is the upper left corner right here. This is 0, 0, with the first number increasing as you go down, and the second number increasing as you move to the right. So down here, this is going to be, you know, whatever it is, 800, 800. Um, that's the wrong numbers, but you get the point. So anywhere you choose to position your elements inside of this imaginary grid is going to move them around on your window. Now, I still have one more layout issue here, and that is the text that I wanted to put inside of my text box doesn't fit. It's getting cut off because it's too wide for the default width of the line edit box. So I've got to figure out how to change the size of that. And to do that, I'm going to go right back to the documentation. And here on the widgets and layouts page, I'm going to scroll down once again to my Q line edit. And I'm going to check out the public functions that are available to me down here for Q line edit. And I'm looking for something to change the size or the width of the text box. And actually, I already know ahead of time that I'm not going to find it. There's a lot of different things that you can do here including setting the cursor position, or selecting text, setting the maximum length, the maximum amount of text that can be keyed in. But there's nothing about the size of the object. And the first thing that ought to occur to me is, you know, size is kind of a general concept. It's not really specific to a text box. A lot of different widgets are going to have a size aspect to them. So maybe it's not here in the line edit box itself, but rather it's in its parent. And we can see here that it inherits directly from Q widget. So I'll go to Q widget, and obviously there's a lot of different things that you can do with a Q widget. It's the top level parent class, but I know that what one of the things I'm going to run into is a little function called set 
fixed width. And here it is, and it just takes an integer w, and if I click on it, I can see it sets the minimum and maximum width of the widget. So, perfect, that's exactly what I want to do. I'm going to bounce back into my code, and I'm simply going to say le.set fixed width, and let's say 175. We'll see how that looks. Save that, and I will come back to my code, and give it a run, and voila! There we can see that now the text box is wide enough to fit all of my text. So, why did I go through that exercise? To hammer home the importance of the documentation. There's obviously way more details here than we could ever go through in any nugget. It would be hours and hours and hours of nugget of just me reading off what's available in the documentation. You need to be comfortable and familiar with browsing and navigating around inside this QT documentation so that you can figure out how to use all of these different widgets. And you can see there's a ton of them. There's not just labels and line edits. There's push buttons and radio buttons and scroll bars and sliders. And those are just the basic ones. They have advanced widgets as well. Calendar pickers and table views and tree views. So there's a lot of different things, a lot of different elements that you can use, like Lego pieces, to put together your user interface. And you're going to learn about all of those inside of this documentation page that QT provides. And that concludes this nugget on PyQT Basics using widgets. You should now be prepared to go and build awesome, complex user interfaces with PyQT, very simply using the individual widget elements. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.